Most opportunities in life come by way of who you know, so it is critical to forge relationships with others that could potentially provide introductions or opportunities for experiences that you want or desire. Welcome to the Writing on My Mind podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Emanuela Stanislaus, doctor, coach, and diversity consultant. I finished my doctorate in four years while working full-time, traveling the world, and balancing a busy social life, and now I'm on a mission to create community for other BIPOC women to complete their doctorate degrees. Join me as I discuss the ups and downs of pursuing a doctoral degree. I'll be sharing personal stories, and I'm bringing some friends along for revealing conversations about their doctoral journey and provide inspiration for others to level up as doc students. Hello, and welcome to episode 16 of the Writing on My Mind podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Emanuela Stanislaus, and I'm here again with another episode. Today is a solo episode, and I thought I would talk about a topic that I love speaking about, which is networking. We talked a little bit about this in episode three with Dr. Crystal McGregor, when she shared that she wished that she knew more about the importance of networking, both in academia and outside of it. Her comment is more common than I'd like to admit. And her thoughts inspired me to dedicate this whole episode on the topic of networking. If you haven't listened to it, you definitely want to hear her powerful story. Again, that's episode Three with Dr. Crystal McGregor. Networking is critical for your success in general and is particularly important for your career as a doc student as well as after you're done with your program and navigating the professional world. In general, I think it is the same whether you are a full-time doc student or a part-time doc student with a full-time job. So when I break down these networking examples and when I'm talking about networking in general, I will be highlighting and talking about both scenarios. So you may be wondering, why is networking important? As I've shared multiple times on the podcast, I am a first-generation everything. I'm a first-gen American, a first-generation college student, and first-gen professional. For the most part, I had no idea what I was doing when I was in the middle of navigating many parts of my life, whether it's high school, college, or even the professional world. And this was largely due to the fact that my parents didn't experience any of the things that I was going through. They didn't know what it was like to navigate school in this country. They also didn't know what college life was like. And I didn't have older cousins or siblings to help guide me through the process. Most of what I'll be sharing in this episode is both from my personal experience as well as information that I've gathered from recruiters from Fortune 500 companies who partner with me in my day job to recruit diverse talent as well as the advice and professional development that we provide students from our university career center. Most opportunities in life come by way of who you know, so it is critical to forge relationships with others that could potentially provide introductions or opportunities for experiences that you want or desire. So I want to talk a little bit about why it's important to network as a doc student. The first thing is that your interests and priorities might change. I received so much advice about coming into my doc program with my research topic already established and making sure that all of my papers during my coursework was tied to that topic. I'm sure that some of you have probably received similar advice. The reason for this advice is that the work that you do during your coursework and the things that you have read could contribute to your literature review and make that part of the dissertation process that much easier. I came into my program wanting to research women in STEM, and my goal was to graduate and go towards the career path of becoming a vice president of student affairs at a university. During my third year in my doc program, I decided that I wanted to shift topics. 
And not only did I want to change my topic, I decided that I no longer wanted to pursue a vice president of student affairs role. As you can imagine, the idea of switching my topic during my third year was a process. So that was where networking came in for me. I networked with other folks who could help me work through the ideas that I was having with my new dissertation topic. I was able to expand my network by chatting with different professors outside of my program to get their feedback about my new topic. And the benefit of this was I got to learn more about them and their research, and I was able to gain the assistance that I needed to enhance my research topic. Additionally, some of the people that I met with about my dissertation topic were able to introduce me to other people who, again, helped to expand my network and help me in a number of different ways. The second reason why networking is important for doc students is the whole idea of support and community. Having a strong support system and community is something that is super critical to your success as a doc student. I feel like I'm always talking about community on the podcast and definitely want to encourage you to listen to episode 13 where I talk about the value of community, as well as episode 15, where I talked to my friend, Dr. Lamisha Brown, about the ways that we created community between ourselves, as well as the ways that she did it through her program and her efforts through the First Gen Docs community. So definitely check out both of those episodes. But my point today when I'm talking about community and networking, is that through networking, you can create the support and community that you need to thrive within your program. The third reason why networking is important for doc students is collaboration. There's no way that you can get everything that you need from your advisor or dissertation chair. Through networking, I've been able to gain writing and presentation opportunities, the chance to collaborate on research projects. I've gained recommendations for volunteer opportunities. I've also gained mentorship and have been able to mentor others. Bottom line is there's so much to gain from networking. One of the things that I like to promote when talking about networking is the idea of developing your own personal board of directors. Think of a corporation or organization and how they have members of their board to guide the organization to reach its goal. Your personal board is the same thing. By establishing a personal board of directors, you have different individuals who make up your board with various expertise and insights that you can call on for a variety of things. With a personal board of directors, the idea is that you are not always calling on the same person all of the time when you need advice. You may have someone on your board that is involved in your industry, so you may call on that person. At the same time, you may have someone on your board who has nothing to do with your industry to provide some objective advice. You may have someone there to provide feedback on your writing, your career moves, or personal things. And it's a good idea to have a mix of gender, race, ethnicity, and age to provide you with some diversity of ideas and thoughts and backgrounds as you navigate through your career. So when you're thinking about networking, I want to encourage you to think about folks that you would like to be a part of your personal board of directors. Now, I want to share some thoughts on the best places to network as a doc student. The first obvious thing is through academic and industry conferences. As a higher ed professional, I was really only privy to attending conferences such as NASPA, which is the National Association for Student Personnel Administrators, as well as career services related conferences because, again, I'm a higher ed professional working in career services. However, during my third year in my doc program, I was able to convince my boss at the time to allow me to attend an academic conference. And attending that conference was so 
eye-opening for me and shifted some of my interests. I attended ASH, which was the Association for the Study of Higher Education. And through that, I was able to expand my network and learn more about the academic research world, which is only open to those who go the faculty route. I was able to meet people that I was citing in my research, which was pretty cool. And I gained even more of an appreciation for the research process. I would totally encourage part-time doc students to do the same, or even those who are considering going the administration route, because you just never know how this might impact the way that you think and your future goals. Another way to network is through informational interviews. I use this all the time. Informational interviews are a goldmine. It's an opportunity to meet with someone in a low stakes situation. The idea is that you meet with them to learn more about who they are and more about their career trajectory. Sometimes the informational interview is to learn about a particular industry. Other times it's to learn more about a particular company. Another side to informational interviews is that it can help you with goal setting in terms of your career path. And for me in this COVID-19 world, I think that it's a lot easier to set up a phone call or a Zoom call instead of meeting face to face. So I definitely encourage you to do that. So those are two of the best ways to network as a doc student. So let's talk about ways to maximize your networking efforts because you're going to have to set some things in place to make sure that your efforts are fruitful. So I want to talk about five ways to maximize your networking efforts. The first one is you have to determine your goals. Do you want to work with a specific person on a research project? Do you want to gain a postdoc research opportunity? And I don't know if I've shared this before, but I'm an introvert. So when I go to a networking event, I have to set up goals. It just helps me to know what I'm going to be doing so that I can set myself up for success. So I go in asking myself, how many people do I want to talk to? Is there a particular person that I want to meet? And going through this exercise helps me to manage my time and energy while I'm attending the event. And a tip that I have for my fellow introverts is to listen to music that gets you hyped prior to going to an event. And the idea behind that is that it gets you super excited, it gets you pumped and full of energy before you enter the space and helps you to be successful. So my second piece of advice for maximizing your networking efforts is to take stock of your network. When you do this, you want to ask yourself, who makes up my current network? How can my current network help me accomplish my goals? Do I see any gaps in my network? And your answers to this will help you to determine where you should direct your energy. It will help you to determine who you want to reach out to, who you want to be a part of your your network, a part of your board of directors, and so on. Third, start reaching out. Don't wait. (laughs) You have to start and you have to continue communicating. You can't wait until you need something to activate your network. In the virtual space, I think that It's a lot easier to get on people's calendars since people are constantly in their emails and inboxes. Invite people for virtual coffee or tea or a happy hour and see what happens. The idea behind reaching out is communicating what your accomplishments have been since the last time you connected, what your goals are, what your interests are. And by sharing all of these things, that is how people can know what is going on in your world and see how they can help you accomplish your goals. You can't assume that your network knows how to help you. You have to tell them what you want. That is tip number three with reaching out. Number four, if you don't have a LinkedIn account, get one. (laughs) If you have one but haven't logged in in a while, it's time to dust off the cobwebs. 
add a profile photo, get active and connect with others. Like and comment on posts that you see. And while you're there, share content that shows your subject matter expertise. Join groups that make sense with the goals that you have for yourself and that you're trying to accomplish. Share your successes so that people know what's going on. And by doing that, that keeps you top of mind. Additionally, connect with me while you're while you're in there. I'm at Dr. Emanuela. I love connecting. And so making sure that you are on LinkedIn and that you're active and that you keep that up to date is maximizing your networking efforts. And then lastly, you want to make sure that you develop a strong elevator pitch. And the only way to do that is by practicing. For those not familiar with an elevator pitch, it's usually a 30 to 60 second personal commercial about yourself, which introduce a combination of your background, research interests, goals, and skills. It tells people who you are, what you do, and what you want to accomplish. So be sure to develop one, practice it, and use it, and get to the point where it's effortlessly rolling off the tip of your tongue and not sounding rehearsed. So there you have it. I know I shared a lot of pieces. Uh, I think the biggest thing that I want to pull from this is that networking is a muscle that you have to continue to flex and work on in order to strengthen. And the more you practice, the more it will become second nature to you. Now, if you're looking to network or want to have a support system, join me at the Writing on My Mind virtual writing retreat, which will be happening on May 14th and 15th. It will be me and a couple of the guests that you've heard on this podcast. If you're looking to make some progress on your dissertation, or other writing projects, you will definitely want to be in the house. The agenda includes workshops to get you unstuck, as well as time to write and get one-on-one feedback from myself and some of my scholar friends. The event registration is on Eventbrite, and there is a link in the show notes to take you right there. And since you're a listener to the podcast, I'm giving you 50 off with the code WOMM. So that's WOMM for writing on my mind uh, to get $50 off of the virtual retreat. So hope to see you there and to help you make some real progress with how you're thinking about writing as well as your dissertation. So now I'm going to transition to the What's Up With Me segment. Uh, For those of you not familiar, this is the segment on my solo episodes where I'm talking about what's going on with me. I'm sharing what I'm reading, what I'm telling myself, and something that made me smile. So let's jump right into that. First thing is what I'm reading. I'm currently reading Professional Troublemaker, The Fear Fighter Manual by Lovey Ajayi Jones. For those not familiar with Lovey, she is a two-time New York Times best-selling author. Lovey's originally from Nigeria and grew up in Chicago, which is where she currently lives. She's pretty popular for her social commentary and has written official reaction blogs for Scandal and I'm going to say Game of Thrones as well. Her latest book, Professional Troublemaker, is all about tackling fear. In the book, she talks about the fact that everyone experiences fear and that we shouldn't let that hold us back from doing what needs to be done. One of my favorite chapters so far is the Be Too Much chapter, where she talks about taking up space. And my favorite quote from this chapter is where she says, What we've been told is too much is usually something that is core to who we are or how we appear. And often it's something we cannot change. Being accused of too muchness is to be told to take up less space. Being too much is to be excessive. How do you combat that? By being less than who you are. And that concept feels like nothing other than than self-betrayal. The inverse of too much is too little. I'd rather be too big than too small any day. 
That quote in the chapter just resonated with me for some particular reason. I don't necessarily experience this personally, but I think it just made me think about people who provide you with unsolicited advice and to not internalize those kinds of things because it's more of a reflection of them than who you are. And that's why I I think I kind of like really loved this topic. The thing that I love about Lovey is the fact that when she writes and when she speaks, it's like you're talking to a girlfriend. She is such a truth teller. And a lot of times when she, when I read her work, it's like a friend telling me exactly what I need to hear. And so I definitely recommend this book. She has some, she provides some practical advice in throughout the book. And it's also a dedication to her grandmother, who she honors and pays tribute to for standing in her truth and being her authentic self without apology. So next thing, what I'm telling myself, I'm telling myself that there's still good in the world and that I can make a difference. I tell myself this because I've been really saddened by everything that's going on in the world, especially as it relates to all of the anti-Asian violence that is going on and woefully ignorant people out there. I have to continue to remember that there are more good people on this planet than bad people. And I have to keep telling myself that to remain hopeful and to continue to make a difference. Something that made me smile recently, um, I recently got vaccinated, actually three weeks ago, and I remember uh, after I got it, of course, I smiled. I remember just a wave of emotions falling over me. I think that everything that I had been holding back over the past year just bubbled up into the surface. And I know that the vaccine doesn't solve everything, but it is definitely a step forward to making sure that people are safer and that if folks do get sick, they don't end up in the hospital or pass away from the virus. And so I'm just grateful for being vaccinated And so that wraps up this week's episode. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Uh, I hope that you found my networking tips helpful. And I will see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Writing on My Mind podcast. If you'd like to support the podcast, make sure you subscribe and rate the show on Apple Podcasts and spread the word to other women of color doctoral students to grow our community. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Dr. Emanuela. And if you're looking for a group of real women of color doctoral students to help you accomplish your goals, join the Writing On My Mind community by visiting writingonmymindpodcast.com. See you on the next episode.